OK, can you just have a thumbs up if the screen has changed for you? Fabulous. That's good. Excellent. Oh, well done. Brilliant. OK, so welcome to our um, workshop. Um, originally, it was we had a title of Microsoft Teams and engaging EY, EYFS and then Adele and I and everyone, we got together and we decided that actually there was so much more to it than that. And it was a really good opportunity to talk about the whole blended learning in EYFS and how how we can move forward. You know, we've all come on such a massive journey in the last um, year that how are we going to implement this and continue this throughout the next, um, you know, our teaching career and for those children. So um, I'll pass you over to Adele and you can... Um, you can do the introductions today. Okay. So for those of you that I don't know, I'm Adele Darlington. I'm based at Lyfield Primary School in Uppingham. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I've actually been here for, this is my 21st year at Lyfield. Um, and that's as long as I've been teaching. I've been mainly based in Key Stage 1. I'm now in the EYFS class. I um, And I also create content for some educational websites. But I have to sign non-disclosure agreements. So I can't actually tell you what they are. <laughs> yeah. Right, over to you then, Sam. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, my name is Samantha Brewster, and um, I have also been teaching for um, 20 years. Um, so my first teaching um, post was a, a school in Market Harbour, and I was there for 16 years, and it was a bit of a leap to, to change that because I loved it, and I'd literally grown up there. Um, and I came to Farnham Fields four years ago, um, where I took on the role of EYFS lead and um, SLE for early years for the trust. So, and that's been a, a great learning curve for me, and it's it's opened up so many opportunities, and it's been it's been a really good journey for me. So, yeah. So we've we'll just that's just a bit about ourselves, and um, we'll just go to the next slide. So this afternoon we are going to talk about a little bit about each of our blended learning journeys. So Sam will take you through um, that what it looked like at Farndon Fields, and then I'll tell you a little bit about Lifefield. We've both come on quite a big journey, but they're both very different. Um, then we're going to go into breakout rooms and talk about what worked well in your setting. So hopefully we can get some ideas from each other. We'll talk about the use of Microsoft Teams, how we've both used it in EYFS. Then look at ideas for what is next for us in EYFS. So like Sam said, not just using Microsoft Teams, but the other uses of technology that we can use going forward. Then we will have another breakout room where we plan to incorporate We'll talk about how we plan to incorporate blended learning within our own settings and then finally we're going to have a little discussion about striking a balance because obviously within early years we don't want it all technology based there's so much more to early years you know the physical um development that the children need the the space the running around so yeah we'll be talking about striking a balance towards the end of the afternoon okay so um as you can see from these pictures um, on the screen, this is kind of where we started our um, journey. And um, the very first um, <coughs> recording we did was um, just a welcome video for our children. And I have to say, this is a screenshot of the amount of videos, and that is actually halved. Um, there were so many videos just for myself and Lauren, the other teacher, to say, good morning, welcome to the first um online learning session um, so as you can see a massive journey for us um, another one is a picture of me obviously trying to read out the daily timetable where it clearly every single time I got the giggles so you know nothing is ever perfect it is obviously a journey that starts in a place and when I look back at that I can't believe where we've come from um, in that in that short space of time so you know we have so both of all of us were very overwhelmed by the thought and the challenge of teaching, particularly EYFS virtually. I don't know whether you all felt the same. Uh, we were thinking, oh, how's it going to work for EYFS? Um, and just through lots of perseverance and never giving up attitude, um, I'm just so proud of where we've come and the team. Um, there were so many times where technology failed us, um, you know, they couldn't hear us or something would happen, but we never gave up and we tried a different a different um, laptop or a different type of um, webcam or something we just kept going and kept going until now I think we probably completely nailed it on the very last session uh, when they were all due to come back in the following Monday um, so yeah but the, the good thing about it was it, it, it just made us so excited about continuing this journey and 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 how many opportunities there are um, to incorporate those rich blended learning opportunities in EYFS and I think it just gave us a bit of time to think actually 
you can do it and you can do it without thinking oh you know I don't want them sat in front of a screen all the time but there are so many options and so many ways which we'll talk about today that th that doesn't have to happen but it is about incorporating that because it's the way of the world and that's how it's that's how these children are going to grow up in um so that's kind of how I I started with my team um so I've put this into two stages and this isn't really um back last March this is probably this is our journey just from January so the this time last year we were in an even different place to this really um a lot less of a uh, of online learning was happening then so I'm really proud of where we've come from so stage one was literally we used tapestry and um, we uploaded a daily timetable um as you can see from the slide before um we you know those asynchronous lessons we pre-recorded a welcome message we did a story for the children every day and then we also used um the read writing phonic, phonic videos at the discovery um phonic videos that the trust um that i was myself and adele were involved in um as part of our delivering the phonic program um and then we decided that actually I don't know if, how many of you perhaps use Tapestry, but we, we were coming into a lot of difficulties with uploading things to Tapestry because literally the whole world and their wife were literally on Tapestry and it was crashing and it wasn't working and it was just causing us no, a huge amount of stress. So we just decided actually the rest of the school are on Teams. Why don't we just go onto Teams? You know, we'll still keep Tapestry as our online learning journey for the parents to upload, but let's use Teams as our main resource for everything we want to information we want to give to the parents and that was just overnight our kind of worries disappeared um so then we started to upload the daily timetables and announcements um onto teams the parents found this much more helpful and they could all access it a lot better um we started doing um stories live stories each day um, that that kind of developed from doing a live story with the children in front of us and again I've put on there never again because it was like obviously we had all the children in front of us we had the children at home on the screen um, the screen was too far away so the children couldn't see the book so I was up and down moving it to the camera anyway we very quickly learned from that and decided to um, obviously one of us would stay in the classroom one of us would then go out and read the story and that that worked really well and they looked forward to that um, we then moved away from um, obviously the children had experienced the set two um, because we do read writing the set two sounds and we decided to then do our own live phonic lessons um, and that was really good um, the children all joined which I was really pleased with um, we, you know we put lots of things on to help parents to join we also did small group sessions for the children that were struggling um, and we just continue to use the use of teams for all information to parents adding you know kind of um, any information they might need or any websites that they might want to visit um, and just kind of as a, as a almost like a hub really um, we continue to use Tapestry as an online learning journey and and that that flowed really nicely and that's continued. So that's kind of our journey for EYFS at Farndon Fields. And I know it's probably really different to everyone else's, but I just wanted to share, you know, everyone how where we started and where we've come to now. So, you know, if we can be if we can go that far in in the space of 10, 12 weeks, imagine where we'll all be this time next year. And that's mm. really exciting. So I'll pass you on to Adele and she can talk about hers. Yeah, well, my stage one, it goes right back to last March. So when we first went into lockdown, we um, communicated with our parents via email. So we used Microsoft Outlook, Outlook to communicate. We sent out weekly timetables and with ideas for each curriculum area. But we didn't do any pre-recorded or live lessons. And that first picture you can see there, I was teaching year one this time, uh, last March. So it was slightly different. But then during this lockdown, we switched to using tapestry for our online learning. We stuck out those teething problems at the beginning, you know, when it was crashing and everything. And it didn't last too long, luckily, but we did have a lot of parental complaints. But that was out of our hands. But luckily, it didn't last too long. Tapestry managed to increase whatever they needed to increase and it was OK. Um, using tapestry, we sent out a daily timetable and activities within a memo. So we used one memo with all of the attachments in. We pre-recorded our lessons, so we provided a daily maths, phonics, writing and then a topic um, lesson. So it could have been an art demonstration or, or uh, geography, whatever we were looking at. Um, then we would use Microsoft Teams 
twice a week, we caught up with the whole of our class and we did an activity all together. So it might be a phonics activity or a shape hunt around their house. So try to get them involved in their parents as well. So we'd ask them to go and find something that was triangular and they'd have to go and find it. We did warn the parents to plant so they could plant some things around the kitchen or wherever they were viewing it from. Um, so that was really nice to have a class catch up with a focus. We, we had a really nice one where we asked the children to share their favourite story. So they talked about their favourite book with their friends. Um, we also had whole school assemblies um, during the week, which our class joined in with via Teams, which either the head teacher or another person in our school led. We also had one to one catch ups with individual children who we felt perhaps weren't engaging as well as the others via tapestry. So we'd have a little catch up with them a few times over the lockdown period. Can you do the next slide, please, Sam? Oh, this Pendisco was one of our biggest success stories during the lockdown period. It, we were finding our children weren't engaging as well with the writing activities at home because it can be quite a slog, can't it, for the UIFS children, especially if they're not in the classroom. And for parents to try to, to encourage their children to write was seemed to be quite a battle. So Pendisco was designed to... Um, engage the children in using a pen, practicing their handwriting patterns, but without realizing they were doing it. So I would choose a handwriting pattern each week and think about the music that would go well with the pattern. So for the zigzag one, which you can see in the middle of the screen there, we used We Will Rock You because it had quite a good, strong, steady beat. Uh, the spiral one, we used a classical track. For those, the waves, we used the Beach Boys. And it was just really nice and a fun activity. And we had such great feedback from the parents that the children absolutely loved it. The families joined in too. And I've just um, clipped some quotes there from Tapestry. So we had a parents saying that they're going to really miss their Friday family pen disco because it wasn't just the children. It was the mum that joined in and the older sisters as well. So what we do, we still do pen disco on a Friday and we upload it to Tapestry so that the children and their parents can do it at home whenever they want to. So it's quite, that's quite a nice thing for them to share. And also, Adele, I think that's been copied um, from many of us on the EYFS um, network meeting as well, because we all thought it was such a fantastic idea. So we've, we've yeah. also decided to, to have a go at that too. Yes, yeah, quite a lot of schools have picked it up on from Twitter as well and are using it as well. So it's really nice to see that it's spread further than just within my class and, and within our families. So it's great. Fabulous. That's fabulous. OK, so so if um, if it's OK with you, with all of you, um, if I mean, obviously, I thought there'd be lots more. So we're going to go out into breakout rooms. But um, now's an opportunity, really, just for you to maybe share kind of your experiences, what's well, what's worked for you. And what we might not need 10 minutes now because there's not not such a, a huge amount of us. Um, so if I um, just pop that on, hang on one second. Okay. This should work. Okay, you should slowly be drifting off into a room. Okay. So if you could just nominate one person to to um be the speaker afterwards, that would be great.
Ash, are you in the room? No, no, not yet. Oh, you haven't gone into a room. Okay, one second. I'm just going to assign you to a room, okay? Super, thank you. Oh, it says here the person is using a device or an app version that doesn't support breakout rooms. So that's fine. So do you want to talk to me about it? Right. I, I've missed the uh, first bit. OK, part that's of, fine. Uh, we were just talking about our own experiences and and basically how kind of our journey um, so far during lockdown and um, what sort of things we've done to um, during that time, really. OK. Um because I'm not an EIS, uh, EIS FS uh, teacher, okay. so I'm just That's going fine. to uh, talk about Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. Fantastic. Uh, we have been using Google Classroom. Oh, so, lovely. Yeah, so um, from first lockdown, so we have been using that. So that's been quite useful. And uh, we have been using uh, uploading documents and then um, yeah, children are quite engaged with everything and uh, daily registration and live lessons and recorded lesson we have been doing on Google Classroom. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So what, what would you say kind of from where you've come from, from the beginning to the end? Is it quite a big journey for you? Oh, definitely. Um, yes, definitely. So we have learned a lot with this. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I find it fascinating, really, when I think about the beginning to now. It's it's incredible where we've come from. Um, in such a short, in fact, it was on our uh, plan to kind of in, introduce lots of the things that we've done so far, kind of within a year, and we've done it within ten weeks. So it's brilliant, really. It is, and the amount of learning we, as a teacher, we have learnt. Um, so thinking about some teachers they were quite frightened to use technology and then all of a sudden everything was on them so but That's um right. no ev everyone is in the same boat and then yeah we uh, we have been doing a lot uh, especially with now google classroom we have been doing uh, live lessons and t children they they are getting they are like tech proper tech technicians yeah now. absolutely so they are uploading documents they are checking their work and we are marking their work handing them over back to them and then yeah it, it's fascinating actually it's so amazing. a amount of things we have learned so far within this year actually no, I can't believe how like even like four-year-olds have, have mm. like my four-year-olds have got used to now kind of putting their hand up by by the screen and yeah asking questions and typing in the chat bar and you know taking themselves off mute really easily it's mm. at the beginning I was just like they won't be able to do that but no. they can it's especially it's I, I think hats off for parents as well because first lockdown parents they were really oh we, we can't do it we don't know how to use this but now they are quite um yeah they they are quite uh, happy to use these um, tools now. So they're, okay. they're getting better and better with that. Like uh, we had um, a parents evening yesterday on School Cloud. So which was quite, which was really good and quite interesting one. So normally you spend some time when you're face to face, you, you're spending more time with parents and then you're running out of time. Whereas, oh, brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, within 10 minutes. I think that will be, yeah, I think that will be forever now. I think every, every school will, will do that. Useful, yeah. Yeah, so we've definitely ten adopted lot that. And then, yeah, some parents, they were finding it really hard to use the tech tact side and then then I had to ring them or oh, you have got only nine minutes to go come on go on to school cloud and otherwise I was talking to them on over the phone yeah. but uh, no it, it it's brilliant it's amazing actually it is so, amazing amazing okay well I'm just going to pop into the other rooms really quickly yeah, sure. and um and I'll be back shortly okay no worries. thank you all right lovely to talk to you yeah, same here
you have to put in how good Sam Brewster was at um, use at breakout yeah. rooms. You could add Adele Darlington as well, Julie, if you like. Let's put in how good Sam Brewster and Adele Darlington were. <laughs> 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 because I've already put in mind Mick Beck's presentation is fantastic, so I couldn't put that again. <laughs> okay, we should be all back now. Are we all back? I don't know if they're not back, they won't know that you're asking them if they're back. That's true, <laughs> that's true, absolutely true. Okay, can you all, can you all still see? Um, no, I need to share my screen again. Hold on one second. No, I can see your screen, Sam. Oh, can you? Fantastic, mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, right, I'm just going to press that we've got Sam because I don't want you to miss out on the sound. One second. Okay, just one. I am just going to unshare because um, my screen has gone very, very small and I can't actually read it. So just one second. I'm going to un unshare and then reshare. Here we go. OK, right. I can't. I can. Yeah, I can see a couple of you and that's it. Right. So I'm just going to go back. So can you see um, everything now or can you just see the main screen? I can see black at the moment, Sam. Oh, no. I can see your PowerPoint, oh, no. Sam. Can you? Yeah, I can see yeah. now. Yeah. OK, fantastic. Thank you. Um, let me just go back. OK. OK, so I'll just start with this slide and this is obviously self-explanatory to a lot of people who are on Microsoft team. But obviously Adele and I didn't know how many people perhaps have joined this who haven't had experience of Microsoft Teams. Um, and we would just go through it right, just briefly with you. So obviously why use Microsoft Teams? But Microsoft Teams is obviously a digital hub that teachers can use to bring conversations, content and apps together in one place. Like I said before, we found it really helpful that everything was together and the parents could access it really easily. Um, it's a tool that can help teachers with admin tasks, classroom tasks, teaching students, future um, students' future ready skills. Um, I know with our key stage two children, um, you know, the, the, the amount they can do on it now is just incredible. And they've also introduced the fact that they now each child will have their own laptop and they're all accessing it in the classroom as well now, which is amazing. Um, so Microsoft Teams, I believe, can save you time and simplify everyday logistics, leaving you time to focus on obviously what's most impro important, improving pupil outcomes. So, so that's kind of a reason why I feel that um, and that people feel that um, Microsoft Teams is very useful. So what I've just done here is just literally this is just a screen grab of my uh, Microsoft team that I had for my children during lockdown. Um, and I just thought I'd pop this on here just to show you how I kind of set it out. Um, obviously, we don't know what's what's going to happen in the future. We don't know if we're in, a, in the same situation again. So I just thought this might help people if they wanted to do the same and set up their own um, their own team. So we literally just um, pop channels down the side and we made it really clear for the parents. So obviously we've got general assemblies, class story, the English phonics and writing, anything would go in there. We've got maths, we've got weekly PE challenges and then we also had a weekly tic-tac-toe grid. Um, so that was, um, I'll show you on the next slide, that was um, an activity that the children chose to do in the afternoons. Um, we also had um, a help desk um, where the parents could could write messages if they were struggling with anything. Um, and each day we would just post um, our daily timetable onto here. We would also um, pop on um, a little welcome video of ourselves, just kind of greeting the children for the day and, and going through the timetable with them and, um, and, and add anything to do with the different topics um, underneath these channels so the parents were really appreciative and they they did respond really well to it um, and I know obviously it depends which which school you're at um, but we think it's going to be really valuable to send um, a questionnaire out to parents as to how they experience teams and did they you know is there anything that they would like us to keep because I would like to continue using teams um, by adding lots of things to it so I'll talk about that later on but I, I do think it's something that can continue um, so just on here, 
this is just an example of, I know it's probably not very big, but once I upload this PowerPoint, you'll be able to see it. So this is kind of our daily timetable. So we gave them um, kind of set times, really. The parents really appreciated having set times because they knew where they, they knew the structure of the day and the children knew that at that time they were going to do this, then they were going to do that. We stressed so much to our parents that, you know, they didn't have to do it in this order. Apart from the live sessions with us, obviously they had to be at that time, but, you know, to fit it in with them because that was what was so important for wellbeing was that they actually fit it to their family. And we just put links in for the for the parents to join. So it was all on one document. They could join the class story. They could join the maths, um, the White Rose math sessions, which I have to say, I, I completely recommend them. They, they were brilliant. The children at home really responded really well to those. Um, the phonics um, is there. And then we also always started every day with a get moving um, task. And we, we kind of added um, different things, clips to YouTube youtube there this is just a half of an example and um, there was a couple of pages of this uh, a tic-tac-toe grid i found that um, instead of saying right this afternoon i want you to do this activity i felt that by putting this out on a monday the parents would have they had time to kind of choose what they wanted to do and map out their week so they could think all oh, right okay there's a, a baking task on here or there is a task where we need something i've got time to get that um and they could choose which one they wanted to do we also added just 100 things to do indoors and another one about outdoors just so they had a really wide variety of things um and they any activity they did we just encouraged them to upload it to tapestry and then we would have a slot during the day where we would comment on it um so that was really useful um so i've just popped on here just in case you know you haven't set up a team before and you would like to um these were some of the things that i obviously needed to know straight away and very quickly um was obviously on this page here if you can see um i've obviously put this here friday the 5th of march that's an announcement so just to find an announcement on here it's really easy you can just find the pen you click on there and you click on announcement it takes you to this and you type your headline in um, and then amazingly on this part here you can upload your own image they have got images themselves but we found that if our that week we were looking at growing every day we would put the background to be a growing picture just to kind of make it a bit more child friendly and um and kind of entice them to want to do it even more um so there's also um another area here on called files and it's so easy literally you just add to add files and we we always said to the parents that in the channels there will always be files within each channel to help you so we put things like youtube clips we put um it might be handwriting um, sheets for them to do just extra things for them to access we popped in files and it was you literally press files and you click upload and you can upload it into files and it's there for them so it's really easy um another thing that i found really good and, and very beneficial to the parents was there's a, a button called add tab um, and you just click on here and you literally can search for an app or you can search for maybe a website. And if you click on that, it automatically goes to, um, if I go back to here, it automatically goes to the top. Can you see where it says two more and then a plus? It automatically goes to there so that the parents can access that straight away. So if we kind of perhaps put on our daily timetable right today, I'd like you to access Phonics Play and you've got it in the tab, it's all there for them. They can access it straight away. So it's just, our main thing was about making it easy for the parents because we felt if it wasn't easy, if they couldn't access it all straight away, they just wouldn't and they wouldn't engage. And that was the one thing, well, not the one thing, there was lots of good things that came out of it, but the parents were really complimentary on how easy it was to access and how everything was together and how they could just, you know, find everything. So I was really pleased with that. Um, so, you know benefits of of, of um, sort of having recorded lessons and live lessons. Um, so we felt that lessons could be in future used to provide teachers with more time and opportunities to access their CPD. So obviously Adele's talked about um, the pen disco. That could be something that you've already pre-recorded. And I know um, another teacher from the trust. She has done. Um, 
some other kind of handwriting lessons that she knows she's going to use as uh, lessons that she uses for when maybe she has wants to go and access some CPD that's what the children will yeah. do in the classroom we also we were also saying so when we're in the breakout room that if you pre-record things like pen disco and handwriting and play it on your whiteboard it sort of frees you up as a teacher to go around and, and support the children while they're while they're working so sort of correcting pencil grip or just yeah. if they're forming things incorrectly you know just to step in and support you can act like at your own TA can't you almost you definitely can absolutely so and also we felt that they could then be banked and they could be used year after year so it's you know once you've got that resource it's like the the trust videos that we've done for phonics that's something that can be accessed every single year I mean at the time it took a long long time to make didn't they Adele um but, <laughs> yeah but they were just you know they were so beneficial I'd like to think they were but lots of parents you know like thank goodness we had those um and and teachers as well so I'm really pleased we did them um we also, I also thought that it'd be a good way to show parents on teams, um, like we very often throughout the year would deliver a workshop, maybe about phonics, maybe um, we have kind of maths lesson, you know, where teachers would show their maths lesson and all the parents would come in and watch and it, it was just a bit, oh, because there were so many parents in your classroom. But actually, mm -hmm. if you had a Teams meeting and they all just suddenly, they joined via um, Teams, they could watch the lesson and you could talk them through it and, I kind of feel as well it would um, increase engagement levels as well because if parents could access it quite easily just through mm -hmm. their phone or from home you'd have a lot more people accessing those kind of workshops rather than them having to take huge chunks of time out of work or you know finding a babysitter for their children who who aren't at school so I think there's lots of benefits from it and I think you know we can move forward really well with it um, so, mm -hmm. so that's just a few ideas. Um, now Adele's going to talk to you about tapestry because um, you used tapestry, didn't you, more as as your online learning? We did. We use tapestry anyway in, in our day to day life in EYFS here, and I'm, I'm guessing probably a lot of you in the I audience here use it too. Does. Everybody in our trust does, yeah. So if you're in, not in our trust, I don't know if you use it or not. I know lots of schools do. That's why it crashed at the beginning of this home learning. But um, yeah, we used um, the memo. Um, function a lot during the home learning. We uploaded a couple of memos every day. We tried to get as much as we could within one memo to avoid bombarding parents with too many different memos. So within one memo we would upload our timetable and what's what's nice with tapestry is you can order whatever you put within one memo. So if you want your timetable to be fir the first file you can do that. So we would upload the the timetable and then we would also upload the different um, lessons that we had pre-recorded and any resources that the children need. We tried to avoid um, anything that the parents would need to print out because obviously different parents or different families have different access to printers and, and stuff like that so we tried as far as possible to not include things that needed printing out. Um, yeah so that's that's what we did Sam. OK, so so this is kind of to me, this is the exciting bit. So um, we're kind of, you know, we've really thought carefully about how we're going to use blended learning in the classroom. And I think the thing for us um, and my team is that we definitely straight away were like, right, we can do this, we can do that, we can do that. And we had to really slow ourselves down and say, actually, what's realistic and where do we see ourselves this time next year? So. There was a I watched a really interesting um clip that my head teacher showed me. Um and I just thought it'd be really lovely for everybody to see it. And I think it just kind of backs up why this is happening and why it isn't just the end of um lockdown or oh, okay, let's just go back to normal. Why do we need to carry on with this? You know, or everything that we've put into place, you know, it'd be such a shame to waste it all. Um it, it's you know, we've come so far, let's continue with it. And you know, if we, I was saying to a, a lady I was just speaking to then in a breakout room that you know if we've come this far in 10 weeks imagine where we will be this time next year it's incredible so i think you know we've got to continue with it otherwise it would be such a shame um so i'll just play that for you fingers crossed it works let me know if you can't hear the sound Can you hear sound? No. Right, hang on a minute. 
Wait one second. Let me just pause it. Is that can everyone else not hear the sound? No, uh, okay. No, Sam. One second. Right. It's because that's flicked off. Let me try it again. Now? No, still no sound, Sam. No, still no sound. Okay. Are you clicking the audio? Um, yes, yeah, the audio is on. The audio yeah. is definitely on. Um, one second. I might have to leave it for you to watch when you see the presentation. One second. Let me let me just come out of it one more time. Sam, if not, you can put the link for it in the chat box. Oh, wow, good idea, good idea. I'll do that, I'll do that. I'm just trying it one more time. Definitely no Sam now. No Sam. Okay, <laughs> all right. Right, well, what I'll perhaps do is, um, We'll just carry on and then at the end I'll pop the link in the chat bar and you can watch it. But it's really, it's, I, I definitely recommend watching it. It's so good. Um, it, it really kind of makes you realise why we've got to carry on with this. Um, OK, right, Adele, do you want to talk about this amazing um, Padlet of yours? Yeah, Padlet is a great tool that some of you might be familiar with. Um, I use it quite a lot with my class um, to share their work with parents because I can put a link I can put a link to the Padlet within our within Tapestry. Um, I'm very enthusiastic about art and photography, and I do a lot of both in my classroom. And this Padlet here, we've just got a picture of it on the screen, is one that I did with my class. We went outside and we're looking for lines in our outdoor area. So I showed the children how to zoom in and how to crop photos using the iPads. And then they looked through the photographs that they'd taken, chose their favorite ones, and we uploaded it to the Padlet. Some of them gave me little quotes that they wanted to go alongside their photos. And we just, it's quite nice just to have uh, the, all the work in one place. And the children loved it and it meant they could talk to their parents at home about it, talk about the skills that they'd picked up. And yeah, I was, I'm really, it's amazing how quickly the children pick up the skills using the iPads. Now when they go outside, you can see them zooming in on their own. You know, they know exactly what to do. Oh, and this one is another one that I created not for my class, but this was for other early years teachers. So it's got all the different areas of learning and um, a group of teachers uploaded books that they use in each area of learning. So that's quite nice. For, it's not a nice tool to use for CPD. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the actual Padlet, is it, Sam? So I can't scroll up and down and show you. But it's quite nice to have the views of lots of different people shared on one one Padlet it's a really useful thing to have and you can add to it at any time so just because it's you finished it one day doesn't mean that you can't add to it the next of all I also used it when I when skip training we were doing live art together and then they uploaded their art so again it's something that you could have used in in home learning but there are different settings so you want people to comment on it or you want to make it private you, you can do that you just need to have a play around with the Padlet tool, but it is really, really great, and I love it. Yeah, it's definitely something we've got down as in our development plan to, to do in EYFS at Farmden, so that's brilliant. Okay. Okay, so as well as art, another one of my loves are uh, books, and I've got copies of these in my classroom. So they're picture books by Jean Willis and Tony Ross, and they're to do with online safety, and they're aimed at children ages two to seven, so they're perfect for EYFS. Old MacDonald had a phone, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's to the tune of the Old MacDonald traditional song, but the lyrics have a good message in them. They talk about the problems of... Um, having a phone and being on a phone too much. I mean, a, a lot of our children are very used to looking at their parents being on their phones all the time, aren't they, or brothers or sisters. And so it's they've got really nice messages, but in a very, very child-friendly way. So they're a good way of opening up discussion about online safety with our young children, because we know that our kids are on iPads and on phones, aren't they, all the time, or a lot of the time. So it's quite nice just to get that message across to them while they're young. 
yeah, they're, they're really good. Okay, so another thing that we thought, um, basically, to to incorporate that blended learning in the classroom, um, without them all, always obviously being on a screen, was the use of the talking tiles and the talk tins. So obviously, these have been around for a long, long time, but but actually, I think they have such a powerful use in EYFS because. As an EYFS teacher, we would always know that they really struggle to hold a sentence. Um, you know, they struggle to to keep their ideas in their head. But by having a talk tin or a talking tile, you could use it in so many ways. So they could um, say their sentence out loud, uh, record it, and that would help them with um, writing it down. Um, it could be that you put that talk tin in a, an area within your classroom, within continuous provision, where they would press it and it would be your voice, and you could say. Um, use and like say if it's in the creative area use um, different types of materials to create something um, so it kind of is just like an extra extra person in the, in the classroom really um, so I think they are a, a very valuable tool and they're not expensive at all um, if you went onto Amazon they're, they're very cheap and I know that it comes with um, a book as well with suggested activities of how you could use it um, I won't play the video now because obviously the sound won't work um, <laughs> but it's there for you um, when you want to have a look at this um, PowerPoint again um, but it's just a quick video and it just shows you about it and, and, and how to use them but they are also definitely something that I think will be really good. Um, another thing that, that leads on from that is um, is QR codes in the classroom. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has heard of this before, which I'm, I'm sure you have, but um, they're easy to use. They add interest and obviously a great way of adding technology to any lesson. Um, so what they are is they are scannable images and they take you directly to a website. Um, they're free to create, um, so you can just go online. It's a, a QR code generator um, so you just download it and, and it's a scanning app um, and, and literally you could do so much with it um, you, I've seen examples of people having um, QR codes scattered around the classroom the children would just go up with the iPad and um, they would um, obviously scan the QR code and it would perhaps take them to a picture or um, it might take them to reveal a shape or it, it's it's endless really how you could use it and if they went to a picture of a dog or on a log and um, that's what they would go away and and try and write their sentence or a caption to go with the picture um, it could be a QR, car, QR code for construction um, play-doh model inspiration you know you could record yourself doing something and it takes you to your video um, it, it might be that you've got um, phonic sentences for them to read and you can you could colour code the QR codes around your classroom and the children know that they need to go to the red QR codes um, and it, that'll be a sentence that they could read or it, they could go to a green QR code and nice and big around the area. So that's you know another thing that we can do that's really exciting in EYFS um, and it's it's limitless really. There's so much you can do with it. Um, another option is um, of use of QR codes that Adele's going to talk about is um, is and I'm so excited to, to continue with this is that the children um, I'll let you carry on but they can use it with books so yeah and a nosy crow in the front of all of their picture books have a QR code so the children can scan with the iPad and they can sit and listen to the story being read aloud and I'm going to sound old now like we used to go I used to get um, cassette tapes with stories on that would ping and tell you when it was time to turn the page. They do the same on the Nosy Crow books. It pings so the children can follow along with the book so they could sit with headphones on and listen to the story being read to them. But all of the Nosy Crow ones, I don't know if, if any other books have, have them in, but I do know that, that they as a publisher have it inside the cover of all of their books. But um, going back to when I was talking about Padlets and photography, I meant to say I've just had delivery of some macro lenses, which you can clip onto an iPad. I think they're only about £25 each, but you clip on. So it's a new lens for the photos and you can take really, really, really close up photographs, which is lovely when to take photos of different parts of plants or leaves because the children can see all the veins really, really close up. I meant to say that before and I just thought that was quite, a, quite an important thing to let you all know about. OK, next slide, please. Laura will recognise <laughs> yeah. these pictures. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, these pictures are from one of the other schools in our trust, Moeka, who have been using VR headsets. You've got your own set of VR headsets, haven't you, Laura? 
at Moeka. And I know our trust have a, a central set, which we have got booked for the first week after Easter, which I'm very much looking forward to. So we're going to be starting our new topics across the school using the VR headsets. So Laura, I know I've put you on the spot here, but do you want to tell us what your children have done with them? Yeah, of course. Um, these have been brilliant. We only just started using these the previous uh, week or so. And what it's helped us to do is because of children obviously having limited experiences outside of the classroom at the moment with trips and things like that, we were able to put them um, under the sea. So they were able to have a look around at shark feedings and things like that. We'd also been doing a project on home where we'd gone into Buckingham Palace and you can download onto there a walkthrough of Buckingham Palace. And you can go into the ballroom and things like that. Like that so it's been a real immersive experience for our children and the language development that we've had from that has been amazing that what they are now coming out with in their sentence structure has been brilliant oh, but it great. inspires writing doesn't it Laura as well yeah this is it and I think because they've now come out with more story language to do with what they're seeing it's meant that they've been able to whiz with their storytelling and bookmaking and things as well so yeah it's been fantastic they're really worth having if if you're lucky enough or fortunate enough to be able to get hold of them. Mm. Like I say, we've, we've booked the, the central, the trust set for after Easter. So we're lucky that we've got that that bank of resources to yeah. share. And, and if, you know, if you haven't, if you're not in the trust and you're in a different trust, um, it's always worth asking, you know, they might have a set that you don't know about. So it's, it's very, it's you know, I definitely recommend that you ask. Um, I'm sure there's, there's opportunities out there that people don't actually know about. So... Um, we just thought we'd talk about a little bit as well about apps because, um, and I must say this before I start, but you know it's really important before you use an app is just to check with your ICT technician just to to make sure that you know everything's safe for the children to use. But these are just a few apps that that we uh, um, have used and are planning to use. Um, so there's one called Chatterpix or Morpho, and it's about creating a hook and making the different characters talk. And and what happens is. So the children would take a picture of their work or their image. Um, and so I've just used the example of a superhero. And then literally all they have to do is swipe their finger across the, the mouth of the image. And then it gives them 30 seconds to record the image talking. So it might be that you would, I don't know, if they created a, a superhero, they might then decide, oh, with a speech bubble, they've already decided what the um, superhero is going to say they could then use this and they can see it in practice then and actually they, oh look what you've done you or it might be from the beginning where it's helping them to write a speech bubble it, it's just mm -hmm. it's brilliant it's it's such an exciting tool um and it can also then be saved onto the camera roll so you could then maybe put together some uh, like a film of it um, yeah. and put everybody's together um, and chatter pics leads to lots of giggles as well lots of giggles lots of yeah. giggles which obviously <laughs> foundation says children need um and then there's another app um again I'll, I'll leave the video because obviously I don't want us to run out of time but um you can watch this video later on it just shows you what happens um so you literally scan the picture um with a, again a QR code and it, it makes it's amazing it makes the picture come to life and um it's a bit like the one um there's lots of apps out there where um, our first week back after half after Easter we are looking we're doing once upon a time we're looking about dinosaurs so I'm going to use the app to to bring a dinosaur to life in the classroom um and that's another one called string um, so it allows children to see things coming to life. So I thought it'd be really fascinating for the children to, you know, arrive on that Monday morning and we show them a picture of what's happened in the Easter holidays that a dinosaur has actually arrived in the classroom. And I just think that would be just a great hook for their for their learning for the rest of the um the, the, the rest of the time we're looking at it um so the next one i've just popped here is um and there's so many i could have put down for this but the, these are just a few um is is pick collard collage which everybody's obviously seen but there is something called pick collage freestyle and what you do with that is children choose a background and then they add their own picture to the collage so you might want to put um i don't know again if i use the dinosaur theme or um as as laura said you know she's done an under the sea theme and we're doing um, uh, going to the beach theme, it could be that you literally choose a background of a beach and, and it imports the picture of the child and the child puts, you know, takes their own photograph of themselves or of each other. Um, and it, it's just brilliant. Um, and it's just, again, another way of inspiring talking and inspiring them to write. Um, we, we, used, um, we used pick collage this week. We've been having a box week in our class and we had a great big cardboard box and we took a photo of each child inside the box and then using pick collage, we've 
put them all next to each other and then built on top so it looks like Very nice. <laughs> they're all in boxes so it Very looks like nice. a class photo where they're all in boxes which is they found that amazing looking at how you can build it all together that's amazing and so then there's also um another th another um app called shadow puppets um, so this, I think this one is a good one for story maps and storytelling. So you take, so if you said to the children, right, and you can, you can literally strip it back to it's so simple that you have the children writing, okay, what do you think is happening at the beginning of the story? What do you think is happening at the end? Or it might be that you have the beginning, the middle and the end. And literally all they have to do is draw a picture or they could photograph a picture out of a book. Um, and then they literally record themselves retelling the story and then they can also then listen to it back of what they've said um, and it's just a brilliant way to progress um, towards children writing longer pieces of writing so if it's there for them and it's their voice and they've used their own story map or it's it's their work it all helps to um, help them towards writing it and putting it down so uh, you know I think they're all they're all great but again it's really important that you check with your ICT technicians just to check that they are safe for the children to use in in your trust um okay let me go to the next one um okay Adele's going to talk to you about this yeah well um because we've all got become such experts in accessing um via teams it's a great way to um, invite expert teachers into your school to teach your children in your classroom. So it gives opportunities for CPD for teachers. They can um, watch the lessons being taught in their class or watch pre-recorded ones at home. Um, within our trust, we have got a, a big project coming up where I'm going to be teaching art lessons to the 13 schools live. So that's quite a big, a big thing. And if it works, who knows where that's going to go. Um, you can build up a bank of lessons or a sequence of lessons for CPD as well, which is what we did as a trust um, over the summer last year and over the last lockdown with our phonics lessons. So again, great for CPD, for new teachers or for teachers who have a particular need in an area to watch an expert teaching to see the structure of a lesson, the language used, that sort of thing. And then it, we've got a bank of them ready for teachers to use when they need them. Mm. So here, Sam, we've got a snip of um, some pre-recorded videos that I've created, some art ones, which are um, saved on Microsoft Stream for people in our trust to access, to use within their class. And I'll also be using some of these within my live art lessons. So just some particular skills that some people might not be very confident um, carrying out with their class. They can access me talking through, so I'll be using the correct language um, when it comes to demonstrating art techniques. And our phonic videos, they were all um, added to YouTube, weren't they, Adele? So mm -hmm. parents were given the link and obviously it was a closed site, but parents were given the link and then they could access all of the videos. Um, and obviously later on, if you want to go on and have a little look at an example of one of the videos that's on there for you um, to have a look at. But yeah, if you're in a different a different trust, it's definitely worthwhile having things like that. Um, OK. So another thing that, that that's worked really well um, over the course of lockdown for us is that we feel that the children have been able to access a lot more trips. Um, you know, obviously it's really difficult depending on what kind of area your school is in, and and you know it's it's hard to get parents to you know financially to pay for for school trips and. You know, sometimes with the cost of the coach, it, it does really make the price go up by so much money. And it, you think, well, oh, you know, it's not worth that. Um, so we've done lots of remote virtual trips this year. Um, the, there's just an example here of, um, of one um, at Chester Zoo. But there are so many. And if you contact um, people like the fire service or you contact um, para, I've, we've had a paramedic um, show us around um an ambulance and everything and and literally it's been the children have loved it they've mm. they've put the sirens on and everything we've had a, a virtual trip to a police station where um that he literally went down into the cells and um obviously they're empty um and mm. he showed us the horses and um it we were introduced to his team um and the children just thought it was brilliant and actually if we'd have had that person and we'd invited them into school we wouldn't have seen all of that so um they have been absolutely brilliant um it's been a fantastic opportunity for the children um, i know you've done a lot of a lot of this as well haven't you adele 
Yeah, I mean, our year two children um, went on a virtual trip to Chester Zoo last week, but to try and make it more of an immersive experience, the teacher asked them all to bring in packed lunches. So they went outside and sat and ate their lunch outside like a picnic, like you would do on a school trip. She also set up a little gift shop. So the children took in a couple of pound and, you know, it's a gift shop with pencil and the rubbers, you know, so that so they still had some of the trip experiences even though they were still in the classroom, which I thought was really, really quite special for the children because they still felt like it was a day out of the classroom. That's lovely, lovely idea. Yeah. Now, we've also had quite a few virtual visitors within our school. So we've had authors and illustrators, um, artists and other specialists. Uh, we had Nathan Bryan and Dapo Adiola, the um, author and illustrator of Look Up and Clean Up. Um, they, that was in World Book Day week. And that was when we had some children still uh, at home and some children in school. And what was nice, the Zoom link was sent to the children at home so that if children are isolating, they can still access what is going on in school. We had Tom Percival um, last week talk to our children about digital illustration. He did a, a whole school assembly and he was so inspirational. I thoroughly recommend him. And it was very interactive. They did a little draw along and he was he was really, really inspiring. And um, Daryl Wakelam is an artist, but he's very, very knowledgeable about fossils. And I've got a few children in my class that are absolutely dinosaur obsessed, which I know is an unusual in EYFS. And we he zoomed into the class and talked to them about a beach that he lives nearby. He showed them lots of fossils. He had some teeth that he showed them. And it's a really great opportunity to invite an expert into your classroom. Um, it's low cost, it's a lot cheaper than having someone actually physically in your classroom and just to inspire the children and to share their knowledge with them. And it's amazing My Adele isn't it how um, if you contact someone on Twitter because obviously um, you recommended this to me and I just mm -hmm. literally contacted him um, and because and obviously we're doing dinosaurs the first week back and yeah. you know, they're so welcoming and they want to help. There's so many mm -hmm. people out there that want to help at the moment and you know you never dream oh actually if I just contact someone, would they do it? And they do. They want to they do, do it. Yeah, yeah. It's really deaf. Because deaf. because these experts are so passionate about their subject and about their field that they want to share it with the world, and especially the young children. They're very very supportive. Okay. So, so the last, um, the last slide, uh, well, one of the last slides that we've got here is we wanted to talk about communication with parents and. Um, Obviously, we've seen and I know lots of other schools in this trust have seen that the level of engagement has has definitely risen um, since the last lockdown. And we thought about ways of, we, in, of which we could continue to use Teams to make it um, more time efficient and for parents to access. So I know as our school and lots of schools in the trust have continued to keep parent meetings on Teams um, and will do. I think we'll continue to do that, um, particularly in our school. I know we find it a much better way and so much more time efficient and we have a, a, a much greater uptake of parents evenings and that 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 again can only lead to better um, outcomes for the children um you know another way like i said before is about posting clips and links um onto your team um having them clearly organized in channels um and for parents to access ways to support their child's learning at home um i thought that i was going to start adding things like if during the week there'd been some misconceptions or ideas that the children needed to embed further that i would put um you know links on there for the for the parents to help and support because they're always you know uh, particularly my parents are always wanting to, to help so I, th I thought that's an, an ideal way of, of of finding somewhere to put it on um, and again another way is for opportunity for parents to share home issues and observations um, you know again it can be used like tapestry um, but but if they're struggling with something they can just pop it on and, it, and it, chances are it might be something that someone else is struggling with as well um so i do think that you know the use of teams does have a, a very strong impact in in any year group but i think it can be accessed through early years which mm. uh, if you asked me that this time last year i'd have said oh no no we can't we couldn't possibly use them um, teams in eyfs the children wouldn't be able to do it but actually they can all put their hand up they can um, mute themselves they can type in the chat bar it, I've just been amazed with how how they have absorbed everything um, and they're only four years of age so so I mean that was kind of a really 
a massive whistle stop tour wasn't it Adele of, of yeah. things that we plan to put into or things that we are using at the minute and we're trialing but I do think gosh if we've got all these ideas now we imagine where we're going to be this time next year and it'd be really exciting to hear um where everybody is in a year um having embedded all of this into the curriculum um now I'm not sure we have got much time to to go off into breakout rooms to talk about how you plan to incorporate blended learning in your setting but is there anybody that wants to kind of add to that or they've got something some other great ideas that they would like to to share with us because obviously they're these aren't things that we're saying you know you need to use these are just examples mm -hmm. that people might want to pick up but there's lots of other great ideas out there I can't see anyone's hands Adele can you no there's nobody with their hand up Okay. There's not many of us, so you could people could just talk if they wanted to. But <laughs> yeah, they are still there, aren't they, Adele? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still here, Adele, and um, so oh, I, 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 thought, <laughs> I thought that was really good and um, just so useful for people, and um, just really great. I mean, you're you're all so creative, and I've seen it firsthand in your classrooms. I just think it's spectacular what you achieve and what you do, and I think your children are so lucky being in the environments they are are, are in. You know, we're really fortunate, aren't we, in Discovery? We've got some really strong foundation stage units. But, um, you know, some of the stuff you've been talking about, I saw Adele last week. I was in school, actually, while you were doing that school visit and um, the, the trip. Oh, really? and I, thought, I thought it was so lovely, that, you know, mm. that, that they were doing that. And they were so fired up about it. They were absolutely yeah. loving it. Like it was just a, a, a real trip out, you know. So there are ways, aren't there, around things. But mm -hmm. um, it makes it so much easier as well because like yeah. you know like if you had a trip and you'd have to then do um a risk assessment and everything whereas this morning yeah. we had a vicar she kind of zoomed into our classroom she spoke about easter she spoke about the you know the whole easter story and it was literally 20 minutes and i thought yeah. gosh that would have been so stressful before getting mm. them all out walking them into town yeah. going to the church coming back and it, it was done and and we had then another hour before lunch to continue and add more learning into our day so mm. I think it's a fantastic tool yeah. definitely it is, it is great but like we said Sam I think we've got to really make sure we do strike the balance because whilst okay. it's lovely to have all these virtual visits you still don't want to take away from the children the the it's option true. of yeah. getting out and about and really experiencing firsthand yeah. these things it so I think is it doesn't it yeah. it enhances it so you still I would still recommend that you have that trip but actually by having this it allows the children yeah, to have you can, so many yeah. more um, which is amazing you can enrich the curriculum so much more can't you definitely mm. and and uh, uh, talking about that just really quickly before we go we've just had chicks in EYFS and that's been brilliant and and particularly in the time we're in with COVID and it would be amazing if preschool could have come in and seen them or another year group could have seen them but actually it worked out brilliantly because I teams called preschool and as I was teams calling them one of the chicks actually hatched right in front of their eyes so the children wow. were all on screen watching and they got to they got to see it happen whereas they would never have experienced that and it would have cost a fortune for them to have got chicks and us to get chicks and then year one to get chicks and then the same thing happened with year one they experienced one hatching as well wow, so how did you manage that <laughs> it was fantastic particularly when i'm scared of chickens as well yeah. um, so i just felt that that was just brilliant you know I, I, seeing them seeing it online was just fantastic and i thought well that just kind of ticks the box that that it, it it definitely has a place doesn't it but we have put here you know it is really important to strike a balance you know blending tradition and technology is so important but there are ways you can do it you know I mean I saw a lovely thing on Twitter the other day about um, some children and they were underneath so a teacher had put a blanket over a table and the children had to crawl under with torches to do secret writing and the writing that they they did was brilliant Um, you know things like you can use beatbox you could use all sorts of things that that technology comes under isn't it it doesn't have to be right in front of a screen um so yeah so really that that's us isn't it adele really yes. thank you everyone for coming yeah. we hope we've um, <laughs> given you some ideas <laughs> what we'll do is we'll put this powerpoint obviously into um um into the files um so i'm um, I mean, as it happens, we wouldn't have had time to have shown the videos anyway, um, but they are there for you to have a look at. Um, if you want to go back in and you can and you can obviously access those videos um, for you to have a look at. Some of them are quite are quite, quite nice to watch. So, but thanks ever so much for joining and Thank I hope you. it's been helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, it's possible, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's really entirely possible because of the way it all works. But it would be really, really cool if somebody could do it. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. See you later. Thanks, Thanks Laura. Laura. Bye. 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 I can stop recording now, can't I? Yeah, you can. I need to stop sharing. <laughs>